you can see that. Yeah, and I and good. I can still and I can still see my face, unfortunately. Yes. Okay, so um, DoD Exact, as implied by the name, we we specialize in drop-on-demand inkjet process optimization and training associated with that. So I just wanted to spend a few minutes giving you introductions and plenty of examples, just like Kyle, who a uh, company Imagex, but of course we work with quite a lot and use equipment from. Um, it's it's good to demonstrate what you can actually do. So a very quick introduction. I don't expect you to read it. But most important thing here is what's the pictures again. Um, we work in partnership with, with the guys at Meteor who gave who are given the course, with the guys at Image Expert who supply the equipment, and we help people bring together those components from multiple parties, including head manufacturers, in partnership with them to help their customers get the best out of their technology. And that may be in an R&D environment, like using a Jet Expert, or it may be building a printer. So I've got quite a few slides, but essentially I'm going to skip through them because it's to give a quick insight into uh, what we do and how potentially we can help you guys. Okay, so the first section is on the expertise and capability, so a bit about me as the principal consultant for DOD Exact and our equipment capability, and then a few examples on what we do. So. I used to work for an ink company, so a lot of the core training I do is around ink formulation and optimization for different applications, including with Tim offering a course, usually as part of a winter workshop. Yeah. So the experience is broad ranging over full um, set of base chemistries from aqueous through oil, as we was discussed earlier, and as you cured hot melt and hybrid in an incredibly diverse range of applications, which I've had the pleasure to work on from OLEDs alongside um, alongside Matt from Meteor many years ago, um, most recently to 3D printing uh, using different chemistries. So that underpins what really is the crux of inkjet, which is getting things to work in print heads. Um, so as a functional fluid deposition device, an inkjet is a very important part of the system and the physics of that interaction um, is important to understand. And I'm a physicist by training, uh, but I have a background in micromachining for my PhD. So I understand how printheads are put together and we work to try and help people get the best out of the printheads and inks. Sometimes there's reasons why both those things are constrained. So whether it's square nozzles formed by wet etching or round nozzles formed by dry etching, um, we understand what the pros and cons are of those head selection choices that have been spoken about this morning. And that goes down to the the machine um, part to make it work. So in the printhead, that's PZT. If it's not a thermal printhead, it's PF2. Um, but the, the thermal physics is also important when you look at heads like Memjet, of course, as we've heard spoken about. But it's actually the precise behaviors of fluids in heads that is a, often the make or break of a printer and a process. So understanding the, um, the fluid in that system and the dynamics of that fluid in a practical sense, not necessarily a theoretical one. And then using that knowledge to reach an optimized point for your process. So uh, there are so many different implementations of inkjet fluids and designs, printing different shapes, printing flat surfaces, printing non-flat surfaces, all sorts of things. One of the most important ones recently has been printing at distance. And this drop watcher um, image on the left you'll see is, is just showing how far drops can throw if they don't see airflow from a different direction, for example, from a substrate. But as soon as you introduce a substrate, then that does become more complicated as drops decelerate um, or as they get caught up in airflow. And we work to help people understand the process difficulties like that based on our experience and expertise. And that's built on practical support based on facilities built around a print station we just heard about and um, another system I'll show you in a moment. So we work on all print heads, any print head that our customer requires and obtain the electronics from people like Meteor um, or whatever the customer chooses. And we integrate that into our test systems in order to prototype and prove what works and what doesn't. Of course, if you're building a $3 million printer, I can't have one of those in the lab, but we do everything possible to close the gap between lab testing and implementation. 
And part of that is the Jet Expert print station here, highly adapted um, for packaging testing involving both low resolution uh, end shooter heads that we've heard discussed and the ink system here, a GIS ink system to drive um, a Samba print head for doing uh, more application specific prototyping. And the output of modifying such a system so it can use either GIS electronics or meter electronics interchangeably and importantly quickly is the crux of our business because you can screw on a different print head but it does take time if you haven't made preparations to make that process efficient but we also have expanded into using a platform based on the meteor drop watcher this allows multiple different types of print heads to be mounted simultaneously with greater ease although it does come with some speed restrictions considering the type of conveyor we've adopted here. It's relatively low cost. But uh, one of the important things, as we'll discuss in uh, examples later, is the CMYK prototyping. And because we've got two different types of drop watcher, we use the one that works best for the problem that's being solved, whether that's the exact drop formation on the left from the uh, Jet Expert, or the much higher sampling rate you get from the Meteor that gives you a lot of um, information about the you know sub um, 0.1 second behavior of pressure differences due to ink system for example i haven't got time to show you videos but feel free to contact me and we can talk about it more um, i said i haven't got time but they are videos i haven't got time to explain them <laughs> so quick question just, yeah quick question in your laboratory, what web speeds could you simulate? So the Jet Expert um, print station goes up to um, over 100 meters a minute. Um, okay. in, in effect, then it's quite difficult to run continuously on that just because of substrate supply. It's not a real printer. So if you want to run two kilometers of substrate, that's tricky. So yeah. we use methods to prototype things like the airflow induced by continuous substrate movement. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore close that gap so, yeah. um, so you could potentially uh, simulate or, or print up to 200 meters per minute that's the aim to try and do that um, the, the, the belt itself doesn't go as fast as 200 meters a minute but if you put in in place an airflow system to induce that some people have also printed on um, metal rollers to induce that type of effect although because they are relatively small diameter they don't necessarily have the same air entrainment effect. So yeah. some of the challenges with particularly very high speed are quite difficult to simulate, but it can be done. Okay, and, and, your, it, and your ambient environment in, in the laboratory, is it controlled also? Yes, so we have air conditioning so that we can control temperature to a specific requirement. Yeah, humidity? Humidity, we haven't got at the moment, but it's, rel it's a relatively small room, so quite easy to implement with a humidifier, dehumidifier okay. arrangement. Okay, interesting. Thank you very much. Hmm? Okay, so just examples of services. Waveform's a big one for us, and that means uh, taking a fluid and giving a waveforms of a client that is an optimized setting for the application they need. So taking in their um, uh, process requirements like throw distance and print speed, and then producing a waveform on a given head. This example is a very simple one of two colors on a, a GH print head used for prototyping. It's clear which one is good and bad, hopefully. Um, here, the low resolution is only 300 dpi, hence the number of gaps in the print. Um, if you look at the most used print head in the market at the moment, particularly the high speed single pass, as just discussed, the Samba, then bread and butter stuff of waveforms is to produce um, gray levels appropriate for the print, but also of nozzle hiding, and complete with um, meniscus control where necessary and where, um, where the print speed allows for it. We uh, help people choose print heads by using uh, end shooter low cost print heads to prototype different types of print resolution on different substrates. Um, and that can be not always substrates that are um, actually um, absorbing or non-absorbing. They could be ones that actually let the ink pass through like non-wovens or um, abrasive supports. And we do um, optimizations of primers and inks for things like packaging. Uh, so this again is using a lower resolution print head, but helping optimize the coatings and ink interaction based on temperature, drop volume, and print speed. 
And when we talk about print speed, of course, it varies a lot when you start throwing drops different distances, which is interesting for print to shape applications. Um, this is an example of an experiment done on a Starfire printhead at different print speeds at different throw distances. And the effect on print resolution and the ability to reproduce intended patterns is clear. And why would you do that? Well, we want to print a profile and in decor printing profiles is quite a large part of the um, of the early market for inkjet because of a lower print width. And so being able to print up to 20, 15 to 20 millimeters distance and still resolve some sort of detail is very dependent on the print pattern, but it can be demonstrated. And that's very dependent on the waveform. So you can implement higher drop sizes to cross larger gaps more easily as shown in this 400 DPI Starfire example, where the bottom has been waveform, the maximum frequency has been sacrificed for drop volume in order to optimize later. So that's an example of bringing together process understanding and the waveform optimization. And when we look at on a drop watcher, and we've seen Carl show some nice pictures, so this is a real practical example. So we're just seeing the, the multi-pulsing being used in different nozzles here to, to fire the different drop volumes shown in the previous picture. And using both the drop watches we have, we can easily undertake such optimizations on whichever electronics is required. So that gives you some idea of what we do in our laboratory. And we hope that if you've got any more questions, you'll reach out and uh, let us know and we see if we can help. Um, the other thing that came up earlier actually was also tickle pulsing and tickle pulsing and recirculation are both things that have become prominent due to the use of aqueous inks, particularly in high speed single pass machines. And in the industrial market beyond production print, we've heard about print flatten things. The head health will depend intimately on the interaction between those variables, whether you run a, a zero data tickle pulse or whether you run an idle tickle. In this case, from left to right, we show the benefit on a SG1024 head with a polymer-based, water-based ink on introducing recirculation and tickle pulsing in a staged way. So those are some examples. Uh, I also probably talked a bit faster than I should have done uh, because I'm so keen to share our understanding and passion for helping people do inkjet problems. So thank you for your um, attention and I hope that it's useful.